6 o'clock news starts now on Fox 12 Oregon. Live. Good evening, America. I'm Sarah Smith. And I'm David Dixon. Recently, in Brooklyn, Child Protective Services were called to the Hudson River after reports of two small children, one male and one female, approximately ages 5 and 7, fell into the raging river. A suspect is wanted, possibly male, tall, handsome, wearing a soiled suit, and it is said that he is an absolutely spectacular musician. Well, golly woke her, Sarah. I love to hear his music. Me too, David. Hold on. Actually, we have received confirmation that a suspect has been notified, and his name is Johnny Nolan. And we have Bobby Brown on the sidelines. Are you there, Bobby? Yes, sir. I'm here with Johnny Nolan. Johnny, how are you? Well, I'm doing dandy. It was reported that two children fell into the water today. Do you have anything to say about that? You know, uh, it's just an all, it's a big misunderstanding, that's all. It's been reported that you drink a lot. Mr. Nolan, are you, have you been drinking? Were you drinking with the children? Was I drinking with the children? No. Mr. Nolan, are you, are you drunk right now? No. Are you sure? And I think that's all for me, Sarah. Well, that was interesting. That's for sure. I don't think I'm going to let my children go fishing with that man, David. Well, Sarah, I'd hope not. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back after this short commercial break. Are you a strong, healthy, young male? And do you want to serve your country? If so, well, then the military is just for you. This June 5th, you're welcome to come to the State Building to sign up for the upcoming war. Serve your country, be a hero, and protect your family. This is breaking news. Sarah, we have breaking news out of the suburbs of Chicago. A yellow Cadillac, which was reported stolen yesterday, uh, has been spotted uh, in the 500th block of Mango Street in downtown Chicago. The suspect, whose name has not been released yet, is uh, suspected to be a young male, possibly Hispanic. Uh, you don't know, he could just be a really tan Caucasian male. Possibly. Uh, in his late teens, and uh, the suspect reportedly crashed the car into a telephone pole before, uh, after running from police, rather I should say, and he was pulled from the vehicle, beaten brutally, and then arrested in front of his family. That is unbelievable, David. Unbelievable. Well, in other news, as the danger on Mango Street continues, neighbors wonder if their troubles will ever end. And with that, I'll send you to Bobby Brown, who is on the sidelines in Mango Street, talking to the current residents. Are we on? Good evening, Sarah. I'm standing here with the woman who lives on Mango Street, right in the middle of all the commotion. Can you please tell us what's going on? Oh my goodness, we got crazy commotions going on. We got kids stealing, kids jumping off the cars. Uh, we got kids getting raped here, nearly raped at the town carnival. It's just a mess. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? People are just crazy on Mango Street. That's all I got to say. Do you feel safe in your neighborhood? Ain't nobody safe on Mango Street. No. And with that, back to you. Wow, Sarah. It seems like Mango Street is on a downwards <whistles> spiral. I will second that, David. Our hearts are with Mango Street tonight. With the upcoming war rapidly approaching, we caught up with a brave young man just getting ready to head out. Sir, what's your name? My name is Niwi Nolan, and it's a pleasure to be here, Sarah. Thanks for having me. No problem. What branch are you in, Neely? I'm in the United States Navy. Is your family upset that you're leaving? Well, it's a long story. Uh, I left my family when I was 15, and I've never looked back. 15? So young. Are you scared, Neely? You know, I'm a little more excited than anything. Um, I've never left New York. Oh, my goodness. Be safe and break a leg. Thank you. My name is David Dixon. Uh, TK, that is correct, right? Why, yes, sir. Yes, sir, it is. Now, uh, how did you get How did you get a name like TK? Well, uh, I guess my old lady just had things for sweets and uh, just, just thought she'd name her little boy after her favorite. Well, that's, that's wonderful, TK. Uh, myself, as well as many others, I'm sure, are wondering, uh, what are your motives behind dating Miss Jamie? Oh, well, it's just like natural. When any man sees a beautiful woman, he's just got to make her. Okay, I understand that. Uh, now, are you sure it doesn't have anything to do with her money or uh, her wealth? Oh, no, no. 
fuss nothing like that. I'm a grown man. I can take care of myself, make my own, look after myself. It's a, uh, it's just she's just so beautiful. She's so beautiful. You've seen her. She's so beautiful. And I just, I just had to try my luck, making her mine. Okay. Look where I'm at now. Well, I don't think Miss Dixon would agree if I said she was beautiful. Uh, but to each their own. Yes. So uh, the age difference. I know she's pretty significantly older than you. So how is this cougar cub relationship? Oh, well, you know, it spices up every now and then, but I, I just, if you think about it, age is just a number, you know. I, I like to say that uh, women age like fine wine, not like milk, so. It's whole. It's whole, it's whole milk. Uh, okay, well, uh, that, that does it for uh, David Dixon and uh, Mr. Tea Cake here. We, uh, we all had some questions about his motives, and uh, now back to the studio with you, Sarah. here with Vivian Daly, a survivor of the orphan train. How are you doing? Doing well, thank you. Good to hear. Tell me, what was the orphan train like? Do you have any memories of the experience? Oh yes, I have plenty of unforgettable memories. Um, I remember it was myself and thousands of other orphan children. We had born this really creaky old train carrying us from New York to somewhere in the Midwest. Um, reason being is we were hoping to be adopted by a good family. Um, Remember, it was really loud. The, the caretaker was really mean. Um, hardly any food. It was always cold. And I had to hold this baby boy. If I had to guess, he was maybe a year old or two. I think his name was Carmine. Not too sure. Anyways, and then uh, I actually ended up meeting somebody that I ended up marrying. A boy named Dutchy. So that is he was so a hoop. sweet. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yep. That and sounds like a crazy ride, but I am a sucker for a good romance. Tell me, who was the first family that adopted you? What were they like? The Burns family was the first family. Um, they, they were okay. Uh, the dad was okay. The mom, I think she was evil. She just had to change my name from Neve to Dorothy. I hated that name. Oh, Lord, it sounded like Neve sounds like a, such a beautiful name. Well, I think she was just crazy and wanted to name me something else. Um, I obviously think it was a cartoon name, but um, I think she just hated the fact that I was Irish and redheaded. She must have had a thing against Irish, Irish girls. Um, I remember Mr. Byrne was nice, though. I mean, he at least he was interested in my culture and where I came from, so... That's good to hear. I'm glad somebody was on your side. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that he actually cared about what his adopted daughter was like. So what ended up happening to the Burns family? Well, you see, my first job Mrs. Byrne gave to me, I remember having to knit a lot of mittens and a lot of clothing during this time, this winter time. And I remember Mr. and Mrs. Byrne owned a business, but the economy hit hard. So they had to shut down, so basically myself and others, such as Mary and everybody else, lost all their jobs. And from there, my social worker, I think his name was Mr. Sorensen, if I believe so, he had to come pick me up and I had to go to another family. Another family. What were they like? Disgusting. And I would never wish that kind of family onto a child, whether it was my worst enemy or not. Um, remember, it was the Grote family, but personally I think they should be called the Gross family. Um, Mrs. Grote just had a bunch of kids and wasn't very clean. Again, not hardly any more, hardly any food. I was able to attend school, um, so that was a good thing with the Grote family. But um, you know, I thank God every day for that opportunity for being able to go to school because from there I was, uh, I went home with my teacher, Mrs. Uh, Larson. After you know, I got kicked out of the Grote family. She was able to take me in for a couple of days in her own home, and there I met her caretaker, Mrs. Murphy, that like overwatched the house. Mrs. Murphy happened to know another family, the Nielsens. They were a very good family to me. They ended up taking me in as their own daughter, and, you know, my life went much better after that, and I thank God for them every day. So how did you survive 91 years? You're 91, correct? Correct. Um, well, you know, after being placed with the Nielsen family, they, they took very good care of me, gave me food, education, you know, roof above my head. Um, so and your name? Then. Did yes. you change it back, or? No, I was never never able to keep uh, Neve. I got changed once again, except it was changed to Vivian, which I have kept today. The reason being is because they had a daughter. She ended up passing away, sadly, and so to honor their daughter, they named me her, and I don't want to say I was a replacement, but it was more of a memory that I was like a daughter to them. That does seem a little bit creepy. Were you okay with this? I mean, at first, no, because it was after their deceased daughter, but then I realized that they were like my parents and I, I must have been important to them to take that name. Mm -hmm. So I felt honorable, I think, the older I got. And, you know, as long as they were treating me right and they were a good family, I, I don't mind it, actually. It's much better than Dorothy. 
I've been told that you actually have a daughter. Yes, her name is uh, Maisie. Um, she's named after my sister who passed away um, just a few years ago, actually. I just found out she was alive until up a few years ago. Her name is May, and I just met her a couple years ago as well. Well, why did you put her up for adoption in the first place, if you mind me asking? You see, here's another crazy story. When I was about in college, I ended up re-meeting the boy on the train named Dutchy. We ended up getting married, and he went to war, so I didn't get to stay married with him for too long. But when he went to war, I ended up getting pregnant, and he ended up passing away in the war. So rather than facing, thank you, uh, rather than facing the, you know, the harshness of raising a child alone and seeing the man, you know, his face and her, you know, her face, I didn't want to raise, yeah, I didn't want to raise a daughter alone. I wasn't prepared, and I also felt like I wasn't ready emotionally and, you know, financially. So I'd rather give her up and know that a good family could raise her. Well, I'm glad to see that you actually had a successful life, and thank you so much for sharing your story with thank us. You. Um, all right, that was Vivian Daly, and we just interviewed. Stay tuned for what's next. You know, that was such an interesting story. Vivian, 91 years old, survived the orphan train. You know, I think tea cake story is a little more interesting, at least from a guy's perspective, that uh, young man, see, old female I'm not going to pick which guest I liked best, David. Well, I'm not saying I'm picking one, I'm just feeling... Are you sexist, David? You know, I may be... I'm maybe, tired of it. I'm, I'm really not... getting tired. Live from Fox 12, Oregon, this is Breaking News. Oh, would you look at this? Uh, very conveniently timed, might I add. Uh, Iraq has just invaded Kuwait. Now, what do you make of this, Sarah? They have literally invaded Kuwait right now. Liter oh, the paper is still hot. What does this mean for America? You know, this Should means... Should we be scared? You know, we should... We should not, actually. Board our homes. You know, I think them invading Kuwait does not mean they're going to invade us. So what we're going to do is we're going to send our kids to school, make them say the, the Pledge of Allegiance in the morning. Good golly, we should. And then we're going to go over to uh, Iraq and we're going to kick Saddam's ass. David, there's been a breakthrough in modern medicine. What's that? According to studies, the midwife is not the best way to deliver a child. Very interesting. That is interesting. Apparently, there's this thing called oxygen. And when a baby is born, sometimes it needs oxygen immediately. And with the midwife, sometimes they don't get it. So what they're saying is you need to have your baby delivered at a doctor's office now. Oh, would, you, would you look at that? You know, here's my, my little spiel on this. Well, uh, you would know, David. Absolutely. I've had four children come out of me. <laughs> and five and that is, from an unidentified species. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, I, I, I laugh because getting probed is not funny. <laughs> and I don't know this why. This is not something we should talk Anyways, about on live television. Yes, absolutely. Well, anyway, back to the main story. Babies need milk just as much as they need oxygen. Um, it is essential to their development and growth. Now, I remember when I suckled on my mother. Sorry to cut into you, David and uh, Sarah. It's Adolf here with Mr. Tea Cake himself. Uh, now, TK, I thank you for coming back onto the set after a few brief questions earlier. Much much uh, And we just have a few more additional questions for you, uh, particularly about agriculture uh, in the South. Now, it is known throughout mankind forever that cows cannot swim. Uh, they're just too heavy. Now, what is your view on this? Is that true at all? Well, uh, I'll I, I tell you something. Uh, well, our house got flooded uh, during the big flood. And uh, as we make our way down the road, me and, uh, me and Jamie, my old lady, look over, see a cow swimming, freaking out. There's a dog was trying to get on his back and use the cow as a raft. Okay. The cow was swimming while fighting off a dog. Now, unless it was some super, super freak cow, I don't know, but I believe, seeing with my own eyes, see. cows can swim. Okay, well, there, that settles it, you know. There sure has been a lot of chaos lately. What do you take of that? He's just lost for words, America. Lost for words. You know, Sarah, I have I have a couple words. It's, let's drink to it. All right, David. Good night, America. Sound like a redneck. We're making bloopers. Do something. Blooper this shit. The way. You're not. I've always wanted to be on Bluebird, by the way. They look so funny. <laughs>
Hudson River, where apparently two children, one male and one female, approximately ages five and seven, fell in. A, a suspect is wanted. <laughs> Child Protective Services were called to... Uh... And I'm David Dixon. <laughs> Why was that funny? <laughs> no, uh, uh, Alright. <laughs> Damn, didn't even- uh, Good evening, America. I'm Sarah Smith. And I'm David Dixon. Recently- <laughs> Can you believe that? I cannot believe this, David. In other news- I just take off of this. Okay, are we ready? Oh, we're- Oh, <laughs> oh man, we're doing live. Would you look at that? We're Would you look at that? Would you okay. look at that? Would you look at that? You have okay. to talk loud. That's none of my business. That's not correct. <laughs> literally, literally at this moment, the paper is still I warm. can't even. <laughs> Nutrients. There's a mustache. Nutrients. Here. Can we get him a new milk? My mustache is. All right. Uh, sorry to cut back into you, Sarah and David. It's David. And. Uh... <laughs> Sarah and David. It's David. Alright. Right back at you, Sarah. Yeah. Alright, you ready? Well, uh, well, they can swim for sure. Uh, I, I don't really remember what, <clears throat> what happened in the book with the cow. And, uh, you know, it's just better for them. It, it's, as is oxygen, you know? And I remember suckling on my mom's. Don't we all? <laughs> titty! I just wanted to say titty! You realistically wouldn't remember, but okay. <laughs> but I can't say titty without laughing. So how about we not say that part? You yeah, have to say titty. We're gonna be here for hours. No, okay. I'm gonna say titty this time and not laugh. Need milk just as much as they need oxygen. Um, it is essential to their development and growth. Now, I remember when I suckled on my mother. <laughs> We're done. We're done. 